Queen Latifah stars in the new CBS drama, The Equalizer. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Queen herself. So uh, I wanted to just start with the basics of what your relationship was to The Equalizer as a property, the Denzel movies, the original series, and why you agreed to the reboot. Well, I watched The Equalizer as a kid. I definitely watched that, um, the one with Edward Woodward. And I, I've, I've always had like a, a <laughs> want to see the good guy win kind of thing, although I love a good villain as well. Um, but this was different. This was about getting justice for people, you know. And uh, obviously I'm familiar with the Denzel movies. I've watched both of them repeatedly. And um, again, the idea of getting justice, the idea of fighting for the little guy is, is important, you know. And so when they were approached me about the idea of doing the equalizer, I just said yes. It came out my mouth so fast, I don't think I really thought about it, <laughs> what it entailed. And I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have probably would have thought twice because it's a lot. It's a lot. Sure. In a, it's a lot in a good way, though. Right. Um, being able to cre- recreate this character, the story for a modern audience on television with me at the helm, I just thought it was perfect and um, well overdue. Uh, and I've seen a lot of real life equalizers in my life. So why not bring one to the screen who looks like me? Um, it was just kind of a no brainer. It was really just about, can we bring the right people together to make it happen? Nice. Well, also there is a level of fearlessness to your character, Robin, and just she, she's able to adapt really well, depending on who she's talking to. And it almost makes you want to see flashbacks of how she really became the person she is today, yeah. uh, which we, we do get some discussion about, but we haven't really seen visually. But uh, what did you find to be the motivating factor for her in the beginning that you really keyed into? In terms of what kind of made her who she is? Yeah. Um, I think it was family. I think what you haven't gotten to see a lot of in her backstory is her father and his influence on her life and his life lessons, uh, all the things he would talk to her about and knowing her and knowing what she's made of and, and trying to steer her in the right re- right uh, direction. Um, but her losing him at a young age um, and kind of going off the rails a little bit. And you know, I I know what that's like, and I've also seen friends who've lost like parents at a young age in their teens, you know, and how devastating it affected their lives. You know, how they went from maybe being the good kid to now they're just kind of lost and in the streets or trying different things or getting in trouble because they don't know how to get out. You know, what, express what the loss, you know, and the pain, and so they wind up act, what appears to be acting out is really just them trying to feel something, trying to express something or to try to deal with the emotions. And so um, I think that was kind of part of what you, what Robin carries underneath is that loss. But, you know, luckily she got in trouble and landed in the right person's courtroom and got a second chance and really was able to kind of get it together, you know? Um, but she won't forget that. That's something she would. She 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 doesn't forget where she's come, from, where she came from, and her roots, and how she became the woman she is. And so, she will always have a place in her heart for people who are who've gone through things, people who, who've experienced loss, or people who feel powerless in certain ways. Um, I think that that's on, underneath the undercurrent of of of, of uh, what she dials back to when she equalizes, if you will, <laughs> or when she goes on these missions that, that are kind of much more way, way above our pay grades. Um, still underneath, she's, she's not blinded to the fact that there are people that are really affected by these decisions that are made by very powerful people in governments, you know, around the world. You know, who does it usually affect? It affects the, the, the less fortunate or people who have the least amount of power who probably work 3,000 times as hard, but, you know, are the first to be affected by something tough as 
shoot, as we've seen with this whole pandemic, you know, so um, it's not that far rate, it's not that far from, from real life. And I think that's part of the reason people have kind of felt so connected to this show, you know, is because our, our life, we've had a tough one the past couple of years, particularly in this country, but our whole world has, you know, so to kind of see someone, you know, see the good guys win, you know, see, see the little guy win is really a, a good thing to see every week. Gives you some hope, gives you something to get through through the week with. That's right. Yeah. And along those lines, the first season really does tackle some very real things that are issues that we're currently facing in America today. And I'm wondering if there was an episode or a storyline that just stood out to you for one reason or another that maybe you couldn't quite shake after you were done tackling it for one reason or another well luckily i haven't had time to not shake these things <laughs> <laughs> because because the next episode is on me right away you know and i gotta switch right. gears quickly um but there's a couple of them you know there's a couple of them. i mean i mean just the one that was on you know recently uh we dealt with domestic terrorism and um, how people get into these groups you know, um, people who consider themselves patriots. We deal with racism, you know, we deal with classism, we deal with technology, we deal with people who want to make money off of people's misery and how easy it is to, to con people, you know, into thinking that you are on their side when you're really not and you're just fanning the flames and making it worse and also making a buck off of it at the same time, you know? So it's a big cycle of, of, of nastiness you know um that can affect just really people who are just trying to make it you know um we've dealt with you know we've dealt with uh a woman who was whose son was kidnapped on the show once and she is the um she's the nanny uh of an fbi agent you know and and here he's trying to fight crime and do his thing and he's at his level but the woman, you know, who's taking care of his own home, she, she can't even protect her own family, you know, and we've seen a lot of that, you know, we've seen, you know, a lot of people who've had to kind of go to work in factories to feed the whole country, you know, um, who are barely getting by, uh, yet they're being forced to go to work to feed everybody else, you know, no day off for you. There is no pandemic for you and not necessarily any protections for you. So, you know, um, not to put real life into equalizer life too heavy handedly, but, but that's kind of the real, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what I think some of the things that people see that they connect with, with the show, you know, just um, trying to show different versions of how things can happen, you know, because people don't just wake up and become a, a, a certain way overnight often. It takes years of, of letting things slide. And before you know it, you don't know what's the real and what's not, you know, and we, we even show that, you know, with a, a sort of a Me Too version of one of our episodes um, where, where a, a woman is actually in a position of power, but she turns out to be one of the victims who, who, you know, she was a victim of one of these guys who's still doing the same thing after all of these years. So I think it's an interesting way to show things from different points of view. Um, Robin is going to do what Robin has to do. When she gets the job, the job is going to get done. So she's not, she doesn't really necessarily judge everyone. She has her own point of view or how she feels about it, but she puts everything aside when it comes to the mission. She completes the mission and she'll deal with judging everybody later, but she damn sure has an opinion on how she feels about it all, you know? So um, I, think it's, I think it's that fascination, you know, by, you know, being, being interested in these things, but allowing each, each character from each walk of life to have their own point of view. Yeah, absolutely. And also I remember you premiered after the Super Bowl this year, which is the most massive audience you're going to get as a lead in. Um, can you take us back to the lead up to that and realizing that CBS was going to launch the show there, any nerves you might have had and just the audience response from that night? 
no, I don't really have many nerves like that. <laughs> you know, okay. I was really more <laughs> excited that we were like yeah. going to air, uh, you know, I was excited that we would air after the Super Bowl, especially with this year. You know, mm. I'm just like, I'm, I, I have a problem really just separating everything because this 2020 was a hell of a year. You know, let's just be realistic about it. It was a hell of a year and it was a year that affected everyone. And for me, I felt it was a wonderful opportunity for us to air after the Super Bowl, especially with so many football players having so much to say, being such an integral part of, of the racial as aspects of what has gone on in our country and being able to finally speak on it, not from an ignorant point of view, uh, not from a, a non-patriotic point, point of view, but a truly patriotic point of view and actually getting to hear from people because we weren't getting to hear from athletes before. It, they were just being judged. You're taking a knee, what? You're ruining our game. Why is it that, you know, we became so politicized without the voice that goes along with it that we finally got to hear from so many athletes how they felt about the situation. People were finally starting to talk and actually listen. You know, we saw people with one point of view, but once they talked to their teammate about it and understood it, they had a different point of view. And, or they had the same point of view, but at least they were listening, you know, and, and talking with one another. And so I felt like it was a big step forward for the NFL. And what better show to air after than the biggest show on television, <laughs> um, going right into The Equalizer, which is a show that's all about kind of like getting one for the good guys. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, why not, you know? Um, from then on, it's all TV and it's all what you like and it's art and it's subjective and it's whether you like it or not. Um, if, you, if you're going to stick with us or not and, you know, a great deal of people, millions and millions of people stuck with us and they're still sticking with us. And so um, I think we're doing something right. Yeah, they definitely did to the extent that you're now renewed for a second season. The 17th um, season, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm going to be very old when I retire from the show. <laughs> Yes, you indeed. Your ass. You, get the, you get your trash out of my yard. You equalized your ass. Sorry. I actually want to see see that version of the show now. <laughs> but I mean, Curse, did you see this guy in your yard with <laughs> garbage? Equalize him. I love it. I don't know who that is, but I bounce into that character when I just feel like cracking a joke sometimes. That's great. Um, just as we wrap up here, um, there's a big moment towards the end of the first season where Robin is coming clean to Aunt Vi about what she does. Um, and I'm wondering if you can talk about how much that might change things as we move forward in the series and just what else you might be excited about exploring uh, now that we have a second season here. Well, I mean, first of all, I'm very thankful we have a second season. Uh, Aunt Vi was never <laughs> created to be a not smart woman. She is no dummy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, she she picks up on it. And, um, you know, part of the reason we created that character was because I felt like if I didn't have, Robin didn't have someone that she could answer to, then who's to stop her from doing anything? You know, she will, and you can't have someone who with this kind of power that answers to yep. no one, you know, like someone has to be able to look her in the eyes and say, Hey, I, mm, don't lie to me. And she has to say, you're right. I can't lie to you because she lies for a living. She does this for a living, but she needs to have uh, someone to ground her, you know? And, and I felt like that character would be wonderful. And Lorraine Toussaint is so fantastic in that role. Um, that I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go from here because not only will she be, what does she know, but Delilah may <laughs> come to know. And what do you do when your daughter knows, your aunt knows, and like what happens from there? So I think we're going to have a lot, a lot of fun exploring what to do with that and how she's going to walk that line of you know kind of keeping them safe and keeping them out of that stuff and whether she does continue or doesn't continue i mean that's going to be very tricky and i want to play all of that trickiness and all that complexity you know so uh that's a to the writers <laughs> to the writers room 
Yes. You know, that's, that's why writers write. <laughs> that's right. I love it. I want to see it. I want to see Get it. Get the ball rolling right here. Let's yeah. Hey, let's go. Yeah. Well, for those of you watching, like and subscribe for more interviews and head to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions. Thank you so much for joining me today, Queen. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin.